Australian property chat. Now, if you're watching live, please type in hashtag live. Now, a lot of people watch our replays. If you're watching our replays, just type in hashtag replay just so I know that you're watching. Property guru, George Markowski from Positive Property Solution joins us now. George, good morning to you. How are you, good George? Morning. Our goal, our unstoppable mission is to empower 10,000 Australians to create financial freedom through investing in property using the Markowski method. Okay, guys, we've got 10 seconds left. Can't wait to show you a great, amazing session tonight. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hello, George Markowski and Belinda Flaherty from Positive Property Show going to you live here at the Australian Property Chat. If you're watching live, Hashtag live. And of course, if you're watching the replay, not a lot of, I know a lot of people watch the replay. Just so you know, so that I know you're watching, hashtag replay. If you're on YouTube, press subscribe, ring that little bell, type something in the comments, say hello. And if you're on other channels, come to Positive Property in Facebook, the Australian Property Chat. So good evening. And um, good, good evening. Hey, evening. Georgie. Good evening. Now, Today, we're going to talk about what the 2032 Olympic Games mean for Brisbane's property market. And Great topic. To you, I love it. I'm going to explain to you, are they actually worth it? That's the big question. And, I, you know, you know, I'm a bit of a nerd. Mm. And now, look, guys. Uh, just a bit. Freedom fighters, type in freedom fighters if you're a freedom fighter because we're fighting for freedom. You know, our mission is to empower 10,000 people 10,000 freedom fighters to create freedom, financial freedom through property for themselves and their families using the Markowski method. So that's what we're here to do. And we've got some interesting questions tonight, which I want to go through, but um, we're going to be talking about the Olympics. Also, I'm going to be talking about the oldest woman in the world. Okay. Fascinating. Madame I love it. Jean Louise Carment. I'm going to be talking about her and talking about a few of her philosophies. I'm going to be telling you about the Tokyo Olympics. I'm going to be talking about um, what happened in, in London, what happened in Sydney. I'm going to go through it all. I'm going to talk about infrastructure, profit loss. I'm going to talk about the whole thing and explain to you what's going to happen with property. So if you want to know, hello, look at that. I love all those smiley faces and love hearts. Hello. Now, oh, I love us. Hi, Kane and Denise. Lovely to see you again. Um, I'm going to talk about all this because it's very important and very exciting. Right? Yep. Now, remember, guys, the more comments, the more interaction, the more excited they get, the more you get, which is great. Belinda's going to be monitoring Absolutely. the questions. And I'm sure going to be talking and doing stuff. So has anyone heard of Madame Jean-Louise Jean Comment? She's actually the longest confirmed human lifespan, 122 years, 164 days. Right? She was born in France back in 1875. Right, the Alpha Tower was built when she was 14. And she actually met Van Gogh. And she said he was dirty, badly dressed, and disagreeable. She recalled an interview given in 1988, which was 85. When she was 85, she took up fencing. And she still rode a bike when she reached 100. And then age 114, she started the, in a film about her life. Age 115, she had an operation on her hip. Age 117, she gave up smoking. Having started, at when did she give up smoking? At 117. Wow! Right, she started smoking when she was 21, so she nearly smoked for 100 years. Wow! Right, go figure. You know what I mean? Anyway, so you know why she gave up? I was just about to say, why did she give up? Apart from obviously health no, and no, old it wasn't age, health. no, it wasn't health. No, because she was going blind. She was sick of asking people to help her light cigarettes. Oh, that's hilarious. How cute. So back in back in 65, she was 90 years old and, and um, she signed and she had no um, heirs to her, to her fortune. So she signed a deal to sell her apartment to a 47-year-old lawyer. He agreed to pay a monthly sum of 2,500 francs on the condition he would inherit the apartment after she died. But not only did he pay her for 30 years, 
but then he died before she did at age 77. And his widow was obliged wow. to continue paying her until the end of her days. Can you believe that? Wow. This lady's amazing. Now, when she was asked in 120th birthday what kind of future she expected to have, her reply was a very short one. And these are the rules for life. I just want to go through rules of life. Uh, her rules of life is I'm in love with wine. All babies are beautiful. I think I will die of laughter. I've been forgotten by our good Lord. I've, I've got only one wrinkle when I'm sitting on it. I never wear mascara. I laugh until I cry often. If you can't change something, don't worry about it. Always keep your smile. That's how I explain my long life. I see badly. I hear badly. I feel badly. But everything's fine. I have a huge desire to live and a big appetite, especially for sweets. I have legs of iron, but to tell you the truth, they're starting to rust and buckle a bit. I took pleasure when I could. I acted clearly and morally without regret. I'm very lucky. Being young is a state of mind. It doesn't depend on one's body. I'm actually still a young girl. It's just that I haven't looked so good for the past seven years. And uh, at, one in at the end of one interview, her journalist said, Madame, I hope we will meet again sometime next year. To which she replied, why not? You're not that old. You'll still be around here. Uh, Can you believe that? What a trooper. Is she amazing? Mm. I know, I know. I love her. She's amazing. I want to, yeah, I want to I grow up I'd, like her. I, I thought I'd share that because, you know what, after watching that and someone else, um, I got inspired last night to have a few glasses of wine and just enjoy myself. You know, because a lot of times I'm really disciplined. Like I actually, most times, funny enough, I better start my fast anyway because I started fasting a little while ago. I normally don't eat for 20 hours a day. So normally I, I fast wow. between 18 to 20 hours every day. And one wow. thing about that saves me a lot of time, right? Yeah. And the money I'm saving food, I can put in the property. No. <laughs> I'm only joking. Oh. But um, it saves me a lot of time, but also it's Love supposed it. to be good for your health. But sometimes, you know, I couldn't be bothered. And I just want to just eat or whatever. You know what I mean? That's the fact of it. So who yeah. found that expiring, inspiring about, about her? Me. <laughs> I love those right. kind of stories, George. Fantastic. Yeah. So the Olympics, right? Olympics are 11 years away. Now, who's been watching the Tokyo Olympics? I've been watching um, a bit of um, the uh, the gymnastics. Christine loves gymnastics, and I love the horses when they jump over the little things. We're watching a bit of the fencing. I wanted to watch the shooting, but they're so quiet. You don't even know they're shooting anything, so it's pretty boring. And, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, and obviously, I always love watching the swimming. I mean, is there anything else on but swimming? Like, what's going on there? But I think the swimming is going on because it's at the beginning of the Olympics. But Aussies are good at swimming. So one thing with good at water sports, we're kicking ass, which is great. So I'm really enjoying the Olympics. I'm, it's going in Paris in three years' time, the Olympics. Wow. So 2024. So I'm actually, I think it's 2024, Paris Olympics. I'd, someone correct me if I'm wrong. I'd like to go to Paris Olympics. I'd love to go. I think it'd be fun. So I'm yeah. thinking I'm going to go to the Olympics. I've never been. But I think it's about time. I'll come with you, George. Absolutely. Let's get a That's crew together. That's what I was going to say. Let's get a Good crew. Idea. That's right. Yes, Sue. Um, let's talk about the Olympics and the hard facts of what's going on. So the Olympics. Should, let's do the it. Olympics should, okay. The Olympics should work as a positive influence on Brisbane housing market conditions, right? But the Florida effect is going to be gradual because it's 11 years away. The most significant positive influence to the housing market is actually going to happen before the Olympics. And what happens when, when you have Olympics, and I'm going to explain what happens with the Olympics, is there's a lot of infrastructure, right? And um, this is the way, um, no lay down sallies this time. I don't know what that means. If someone would like to explain that, that'd be good. <laughs> lay down sallies. So I don't know what that means. Um, I know some sometimes. So with Olympics, the big thing is what it does. It brings forward infrastructure spending in the city. So you know when you when you've got a city, you plan. Okay, in ten years' time, we're going to do this. Twenty years' time, we're going to do something else. We're going to build a bridge here, fix this road. But now it's a bit like this. You know, imagine Christmas is coming, right? And you're hosting Christmas, and your relatives are coming from overseas, from different countries, coming down. What are you going to do? You know, I, mean, I remember my parents 
they'd fix the garden, finally put some new carpet in, get new dishes, get, and fix the whole house up and paint it and everything. Like my father Correct. was sitting there for years doing nothing, and then suddenly we've got visitors coming over, and next six weeks, six months, he's like working hard, and the house looks spotless. Correct. New, community, new lounge. Yeah, we, us kids, we loved it. It was great. Absolutely. And the other things they do is things like, you know, you know, filling up that bomb shelter or their cellars with wine and food and, you know, exactly. all that kind of stuff. Like it's like before Easter or Christmas, yeah, you know. That's right, exactly. A lot of times we had guests, my parents would sh would go, okay, we're getting we're getting KFC, the big bucket. And I was like, yes, can't wait. I loved it as a kid. You know, we said gluten-free <laughs> KFC. I'll tell you what, I would just get in there. I've, I found this new thing. It's uh, called gluten rescue and apparently you can eat it and then eat gluten. I'm, I'm contemplating trying it out, but you know what? We've got Maggie Beer. We might as well have her KFC. It's gluten-free. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah, so the significant influence is going to be happening over this 11 years rather than during the Olympics, Paralympics themselves. Because large infrastructure projects, have they tend to have a positive influence on housing prices. Not only that, yeah. you've got... You've got workers that need to go there, which gives you more additional for housing and construction and more people making money and spending money in the economy. Correct. And But the large projects also tend to leave a legacy of a permanent housing demand uplift. Right? So that's, that's what's going to happen. Right? So we won the Olympic bid, which is pretty exciting. You know? Now, this is the deal. The Olympics are expensive, though. Very expensive. Now, Tokyo, right? Guess how much that's set to cost now? How much? $28 billion. Wow. Right? Uh, someone said, we love you, George. Thank you so much. I love all the love. Now, yes, but can you believe that? $28 billion. So they're expensive. So Brisbane is expected that cost $5 billion, right? They only well only a few weeks ago that what they said is there was going to cost three point seven. Now they've put it up to five billion, right? Wow. So um now you know it's good. it always goes it goes up it goes up. But you know what's happened in Tokyo? Prices have gone up. So I'll give you a few cities and what it costs. So Barcelona nine point seven billion, Atlanta wow. four point two billion, Sydney five billion, Salt Lake City two and a half billion. Beijing, 6.8 billion. London, 15 billion. Sochi, 21 billion. Tokyo, 28 billion. Rio de Janeiro, 13 billion. So Tokyo, when they won the rights, they said it was going to cost 7.3. Did man did I get that wrong? So this is the <laughs> interesting thing. <laughs> Every Olympic since 1960 has run over budget. Every single one. But I'm sure Brisbane will be different, won't it? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now, how, just, many Olympic, how, how many Olympics have made a profit? Oh, one. I don't. I don't really. Yeah, I was going to say I wouldn't think they would. One, one Olympic made a profit. That was Los Angeles in 1984. Right. Wow. Right. So, but Brisbane so reckoned. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Go on. I was going to say, why do you? I mean, look. I would have thought that the whole idea of running an Olympics is to get as much tourism into your country and make that money back. Yeah, look, look, look. Um, basically, look, lip, um, depends on how you calculate the cost and everything else like that. It depends on the place you are. Look, you look at Barcelona, you look at Seoul and places like that, they've done very well at the Olympics. Now, London's already yes. a world city. You're not going to get extra people falling in love with London from the Olympics. But you know what? You know, um, I think that Brisbane will be different. I do believe that because such so a too. beautiful, sunny place. Once people go there, yeah. they want to come back again. Because, you know, sometimes you go right. somewhere for the first time before you know it, you love it, right? I'm um, like, yeah. for example, um, yeah, so like you look at Beijing's Bird Nest Stadium, cost $460 million and requires $10 million every year just to maintain it. And it's mostly empty. Wow. Um, Athens, back in 2004, um, they built heaps of facilities that are empty now, and that's probably part of the reason they had that big, um, you know, debt crisis. Yeah. Right? Now, Montreal, they they hosted in 1976. They didn't pay yep. off the 
debt till not 2006. Wow. Unreal. Yeah. Now, the Queensland Premier reckons that um, the Olympics in Brisbane are going to generate $7.4 billion and create 120,000 jobs. Now, look at this. Sydney, for example. Sydney, pro property prices and making a profit are two different things. Right? Yes. Right. And also, when you're a city, when, like let's say Brisbane, Queensland's not spending all the money. Australia's going to be putting money in from the rest of Australia as well. That's the fact of it. Yeah. And they're going to get the benefit. So personally, I'd go for it. I think it's great. And I think it's going to be good. Right? But Sydney prices went up 88% in five years after the Olympics. They nearly doubled. Tokyo already went up. As soon as Tokyo got announced that it was going to be the city, right, um, um, most of Tokyo went up 16 27% straight after the announcement. Right? So there you go. So that's it. Fantastic. So Interesting. So there's a few little uh, statements that have been coming through. Eric Clapton Classic. There you go. Eric Clapton Classic. Very nice. There's nothing wrong how, in... How okay, much sorry. Increase the rule of thumb? Look, there's no rule of thumb because it depends on so many things. Also, I want to go back to Sydney, for example. The Sydney Olympics were in 2000. Or 2001, I think they were. Yes, 2001. Yep. Now, 2001... If you look back to 2001, that was a pretty exciting time in the property market. Now, was it because Sydney went up because the Olympics or was it because property went up anyway? Hard to tell. That's the question yeah. thing. So, you know, I don't really, you know, but as a rule of thumb, the fact that it is you spend money on infrastructure, you get more people in the city and if the, good city, the city is good, you're going to get more people interested, more people living, wanting to live there, population goes up, more people want to spend there, they want to holiday there, more money economy. So I think in overall, Correct. it's a positive. And, I mean, if you think about a place like um, Queensland, George, is the fact that it's not just Brisbane. Like, there's so much of Queensland. Like, you could use Brisbane as the base, go see a few shows, but then get up to Sunshine Coast and go to the Gold Coast. Like, there's so many little points of tourism and beautiful places. I mean, there, I mean, Mooloolabar is one of my favourite beaches in Australia, mm -hmm. I love it. It's a great beach, great swimming beach. So oh, that's really going to showcase. I love it. I love it. Um, the reference to lay down Sally is remember when the female row in the quad race just laid down in the canoe in the middle of a race? None of that this time. They're winning gold. No, I don't remember that, Nico. But, yes, apparently um, one of the girls, um, one of the gymnasts actually from America decided that's it. I've had enough. I'm not going anymore. And she's beginning a lot I of flat. I that one. Yeah, yeah, but look, you know what? At the end of the day... There's a lot of pressure on these young girls and gym, as gymnasts to perform. And I really think that people hammering her, you know, unless, you, unless you're in someone's shoes. You, you just don't, don't know. You don't know. Obviously, she's worked. I mean, to get into the Olympics full stop, you have to be so powerful mentally. You have to work so hard and be so dedicated. You don't get there by accident. You don't get there by being a big baby. You don't get there by being weak. So if she made it there already, as far as I'm concerned, she's a winner. And I really think if she doesn't want to go ahead, she must have good reason for it. We don't know what she's going through mentally, emotionally, physically. And I think, you know what? We should stop being haters and start being lovers and start supporting people and what they do and stop judging people and let people, you know, she knows herself better than what we do. You know, people go, oh, if I yeah, was in her place, I'd be doing this. Well, no, you're not even in her place. You're not even in the Olympics, right? You're sitting on the couch and you're probably overweight and drinking beer or whatever. I don't know, but, you know... Yeah, but it's very it's very what? easy to form. Yeah, it's very easy to form opinions. Yeah, you know? very easy opinions to form opinions. Are a bit like rear ends. Everyone's got one, and they all smell. <laughs> <laughs> you beat me to it, George. You beat me to it. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay, often the country hosting don't economically make it back. Yes, well, I'll tell you one of the good reasons why we're in a good position at the moment. Okay, so interest rates are dirt cheap. So paying off the debt's going to be easy. So back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, if you borrowed money to do Olympics, it cost a fortune and you were paying massive interest. Interest rate is nothing at the moment. We're getting money for nothing. We actually, the more we borrow, the better because within a year, we're going to let, owe less money than what we borrowed in the first place. Mm -hmm. 
right? They don't factor in post-Olympic benefits. Exactly. And look, there's a lot. But put it this way, guys. You've already brought that up. I already had had a lot of um, boom factors that are coming, right? And tell you what, it's going to be coming. Now, guys, um, big announcement. Robert Kiyosaki and I have been talking lately on the phone. Ooh. Right? Um, Because what happens is um, his afternoons are my mornings because I think he's must be uh, in California somewhere around that area. So, you know, so if he rings me, like, for example, at 7 in the morning, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon for him. And I don't like 7 in the morning. So I'm like, look, why don't you call me at 5 your time, 10.30 my time, (laughs) and that will make it even better. But I've been chatting to Robert. And um, because I'm a big fan of his stuff, and you know, Robert Cashflow Quadrant, that book really set me on the path of financial freedom because you know what, you need a bit of inspiration, you need to get excited. I handed Robert my book a while ago. I, you know, remember when he was in Melbourne, I met up with Melbourne and he loved the book, and it's great. So I'm really looking forward to having a chat with Robert. So Robert and I are going to be doing a one day property masterclass. Fantastic. How exciting. Yep. So that's what we're going to do. And Belinda. Lovely. Lovely. No, I'm just writing notes. Absolutely. No, just, just write it on here. Just, I just, um, I don't want people getting yeah, distracted yeah, cool. in the video. People are getting a video. No of this, that's all. Okay. So, yep. um, so it's going to be exciting about Robert Kiyosaki. Beautiful. So, beautiful. Who wants to come along today, one day summit with summit to Robert. If anyone wants to come along to the One Day Summit, please um, type in Kiyosaki. You probably don't know how to spell it, so just write Rich Dad. Put Robert. Put no, Robert. Rich Dad. Dad. Rich Dad. Rich Dad. Get in there, guys. Type away. What? Okay. So, Adam, AFR are saying prices are forecast to double between now and Olympics with median house price $1.4 million. That's what they're saying. Wow. Yes. Look – we truly are going through a massive property boom. It's great. And um, it's pretty exciting. So Beautiful. You better get those questions up before we're getting lots of rich dads coming up. Look at that. Boom, boom. Fantastic. Do you want to go to the next question, George? Um, yes, I'm trying to go. I'm going down to the next question. Sorry. Come on. Now all we're getting is rich dad, rich dad, rich dad. Okay, yeah, um, that's all it is, Rich Dad, Rich Dad, which is great. Good news. Fantastic. How to get an event with Rob, you and Robert, Robbie? Yeah, look, um, what's going to happen is I'm going to do a bit of a – I'm going to be doing – there's this three things we're doing. We're doing a full one-day masterclass. Then um, what I'm doing is I'm doing uh, a VIP lunch. And uh, so the VIP upgrade is going to be like a lunch. So what's going to happen is we're going to actually deliver a gourmet lunch to your house. I love and you it. Can sit there and have lunch with me and Robin on Zoom and hang out. What do you think of that? Perfect. Is that going to be cool? Perfect. I and want a Guernsey. I want a Guernsey. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. We're going to be having a bit of lunch with Robert. It's going to have a bit of chat. It's going to be an awesome lunch. So that's what we're going to do. And he's a pretty cool guy. He's pretty... He's pretty straightforward. Look, he doesn't mince his So, word. yeah, I remember meeting him with you in Melbourne. That's okay. Someone said, why do you think the boom is only going to last till 2026? Is this based on previous booms? Look, I've got some very good valid reasons why it's going to last. So what I'm going to be doing with Robert is we're going to spend the whole day explaining the super cycle. We're going to talk about boom stacking and we're going to talk about the 18-year cycle, how property prices go up and down. And um, look, the boom's going to last till 2026. However, we've got a bit more happening after that as well in Australia, which is exciting. So what I normally do is I'll look at the whole world in general. I do I cut it down to what we're doing? Now, someone was asking about, someone was asking about, um, you know, 10 properties in 10 years. And... If you buy each property for 500000 then you end up yep. with $5 million equity. And they're wondering how do you get your money, right? So 
And this was um, one of our members asked this question, so I really want to answer this question for him, which is great. And I've forgotten his name now. Christina told me about him last night. But, um, but Christina's taken my iPad and I can't draw. At the oh, moment. no. Can you so, just explain it? I know. Oh, I know. We can, or we can save it for next week. What, what's better for you? We're going to save for next week because I need to draw and show you how it works so it's very clear. So there you go, folks. So, Blinda, if you want that, you if that I, I've, all I've got is rich dad, rich dad, rich dad, rich dad, rich dad yeah. in front of me. So look, um, I was talking to Robert. I was talking to Robert Kiyosaki this morning and um, had a bit yep. of a chat. And what happened was we we're talking about the one day workshop, and I was explaining to him how I love his cash flow quadrant. And I was explaining to him what we do here because he doesn't want to do a joint venture with someone unless you know what you're doing. And he seriously said, he said, George, these people, are, they're so lucky to have met you in Positive Property. You know what I mean? And I was very flattered by that. It was awesome. You know what I mean? So it's going to be a very exciting. Happy to have a one-on-one -on, -one on this. Yep. Um, is, if, that's that's the case, probably... if that's the case, they need to book in with me. Yep. So that's we need right. to get... Um... Charmaine to give them a call. Yep. Oh, so it must be Duke Scott. Hi, Duke. How are you? Next um, next Thursday, what I'd like to do is I'd like everyone to know. So what I want to do now is we're going to be getting a lot more experts on board to talk to you guys. And um, Wealth Call. That's right. Yes. The Wealth Call. Yep. We're going to get a lot more experts on board. And I wanted to see what people want to find out because I really want to get a superannuation expert on next week. But then I want to do some mindset and really help people with their mindset because mindset is 90% of it. You know, you think if you think you will, you will. If you think you won't, you won't. It's so important to have the right mindset. Yeah. And I want to talk about, so. about that. But look, so the housing boom is going to be huge. Yep. It's going to be big. And now the Olympics on top of that, Look, if you're not in Brisbane, you know, the, the fact of it is if you're not making out of money, money out of property and you haven't got property in Brisbane, you're seriously missing out. But that's where it's at, really. You know, that's Absolutely. So there's a lot of exciting things happening at the moment, which are um, all coming together. And, you know, you look at the median house price, what's going to happen to that in the next 10 years? It's going to be huge. So, yeah. Absolutely. Your success. Yes, it is. And you've got to be positive. And look, you can't always be positive. Sometimes you've got to be negative. You've got to call it what it is. I, I really believe in being authentic with your mindset and not lying to yourself. I'm not yeah. really to the old school, you know, be upset but pretend to be happy. Call it what it is. Because yeah. you know, you know if you're happy or not happy. So it's one of those Correct. things, but the way you talk to yourself is so important. All right. And we're using your language. The way you talk to yourself, the way you think to yourself can really change your emotions. Yeah. So, for example, let's say, you know, keeping it real. Absolutely. Keeping it real. That's what I do. That's my job. Keeping it real. Right? Other than Brisbane, uh, is there any other areas worth buying at the moment around Australia? Well, this is the deal. Before the Olympics were announced, what was my favorite city? Brisbane. Brisbane. Now they've got the Olympics. Has anyone else got Olympics in Australia? Any other cities that you know of? Yeah. No. <laughs> so look, uh, Perth. Someone's asked about Perth. Perth's great, right? But Brisbane is so much better. Yeah. Right? Is Perth going to do well? Yes. See, what's happened is Sydney and Melbourne hit their peak and now Brisbane, Adelaide and Perth are coming back in. All three cities are coming back in. It's just Brisbane's got the opportunity to enter the big boys. So... You look, at, you look at Australia, you've got Melbourne and Sydney, and they're in a league of their own. Yep. And then what happened was during the mining boom, Perth came up and joined them. Sure right? did. It did. Perth joined them, and there was three of the expensive cities. There was only like $10,000 difference to the median house price in Perth and Sydney at one stage. It was ridiculous. So Perth was batting with the big boys. But then what happened is they just fell out, fell down because they were a one-trick pony with the mining. 
and that wasn't going to last. We're Bris, Bris, uh, we're, our city's got more going for it. So I think if anyone's going to join the top two and turn it to a threesome, it's going to be Brisbane. So I really think if you look what Brisbane did during that mining boom, it was phenomenal. People made so much money. I had a pro property that doubled in two years. You Before sure did. Talk, right now, so I really think you know if you're not investing in Brisbane, you, you're crazy. But the challenge with Brisbane is if you look at my no-go zone list. And yeah. I'm, I'm doing a new no-go zone, by the way, coming out next week. Excellent. And I'm, and I'm also doing the top ten and bottom ten. I can't release it here because I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna be going on TV. Once I release it on TV, then I can release it to our group. But if you look at um, the no-go zone, I've actually got places in Brisbane on my no-go zone. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's the funny part. So some some suburbs <laughs> are winners, and some are losers. Someone's written, take my money. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, thank you so much. But you know what? I want to give you money, not even give you money. I want to teach you how to fish so you can get your own money. You know? Yeah, correct. Because we, we recently had a really amazing success story. We had um, two of our members, they joined four and a half months ago. I don't know if you saw it in the group. Ryan and Carly. They're legends. Oh, I know they're Ryan legends. and Carly. They're yeah. lovely. Ryan and Carly, they, um, they're coaches and they help people um, create Facebook groups and make money out of it. So if you're in business and you need coaching, these guys are amazing. And yeah, they're really absolutely. genuine. And you know what, what I love about them, they're very genuine people. And recently did a video and they're drinking champagne and jumping in the air and they said, excited, we purchased our first investment property. I had a dream of owning my first home by the time I was 30. We haven't been inside this property yet. If all goes well, so what I'll do is I'll share my screen. What I'll do that. Yeah, great stuff. Let's share my screen. Uh, folks, I'm sorry know. if I'm a bit grainy tonight. I've got a really bad internet connection here, so I'm sure that'll be fixed up by next week, but all good. Okay, so how do I share my screen on this? Hmm. Mm. Oh, oh, no, 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 there's yeah. a little... No, no, yeah, it's says, screen. Share screen. Excellent. There you go. So, oh, wow, look at that. It's no, a no, matrix. No. That's not ha. good. Okay, can you tell me what you can see? Because I'm going to go on. I can see your Facebook page, George. Yep, and say Ryan Bowles and four letters sold. Life is funny. No, you've got to, you've got to go and do, click on it. You're on property chat group. What about now? No. No. No, that's not it. That's not it. There we are. You just go down. Okay, great. I'm going to read this out. We wanted to get to property 12 months ago and began the research phase. The response we received was insane. And the people we met because it was divine. It led to a conversation with George and Christina Mikoski from Positive Property. And they help people build wealth through property and are legends. Shoot me a PM if you'd like to meet them. We partnered up and four and a half months later, we're in the market. We're full of gratitude and we couldn't have done it without God's provision in our lives either. This is one of the most, those mountaintop moments. Tomorrow we go back to work, back to serving, see at work. How lovely. Lovely, you know lovely. I, I love it when people succeed and when people are grateful because that, when I see people that are grateful, that's why I'm here. I love that. Absolutely. It's not really Actually, I met those guys. I met those guys first. Yes, you did. Did you? Because we had to find out whether they were the right fit. Yes, but I met them online. No, no, of course, absolutely. No, 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 no. What I meant was to get involved in the company. Amazing, so good. Okay. So people are saying TV. Where and when do you watch? Okay. Saying no, 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 George. They're actually referencing when are you going to be on TV? Where and oh, when oh, yeah. do we watch yeah. it? Yes, I'm That's waiting, regarding I'm, your TV. Yeah, I'm waiting. I'm waiting to find out actually, but I will announce it absolutely, and I'll have someone on board recording it, which will be cool. Yep. So yeah. So right. look, um, having, having people that are grateful is great, and they've got a business. And one thing when you've got business, right? Business is great for creating profit, but yep. you really got to turn that profit into wealth. And the way to do it to turn profit into wealth is through property. Yes. Unless you like FedEx. I don't know if you heard the story about FedEx. You're going to tell it. 
Off you go. The guy, the guy that started FedEx, he didn't have a lot of money, right? And he got everything he had. And good, went to Las Vegas because he couldn't start his business and put it all on rent. Really? And he won and started FedEx. Wow. One of the biggest companies in the world. Can you believe it? Wow. Like, I, wow. I, I, I say gambling's bad. Don't do it. I was going to say, don't encourage our lovely guests no, out there. No, no, no way. No, but, but can you believe it? Like, this guy did it and won. He just put it all, he put his balls in the line. Now, I don't mind putting my balls in the line, but in a smart way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not in a crazy way. Yeah. Yeah. But FedEx was born out of someone winning massive. He put like four or five grand on red and won, I don't know what it's 44 odds and had enough money to start his business and got it or maybe his business in trouble or something. I don't know the full story, but I remember hearing it going, wow, like crazy. You know, the people that are big betters and, you know, you look at Elon Musk, right? And that guy, yeah. he's really bet hard, doubled up and got in there. He's had so much courage and now he's the richest man in the world. Yeah. Exactly, Adam. People moving from Sydney and Melbourne to South East Queensland, they certainly are. Correct. Now, I wonder what channel Adam's on. Oh, I think Adam's on YouTube. Yes. Hi, Adam. I love that we can talk live on YouTube and talk live everywhere else at the same time, which is great. Welcome, Adam. Adam, we're actually um, also in Facebook, Australian Property Chat, but great to meet you. So this is very exciting. So, yes, yeah, so look at Elon Musk. And what I'd like to do is probably talk about Elon Musk next, next week. Because he yeah. had failure after failure after failure. But he sure did. Time, so time to double on property. It certainly is. Like there's one thing, if I go back in time, if if I, let's say I had a time machine, I went back 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, there's one thing I don't do more than anything else is buy double the property I did. Just let's <laughs> say buy more property. Time machine. Effort. Takes effort, takes effort and, you know, I'm too busy helping everyone else buy property and I really want to buy more property myself. I'm getting FOMO myself, so I want to get into it. So I'm getting a bit of FOMO too. I think I'm due. But no, I think you are. So we're going to have to chat. I think you and I, let's buy some properties in Brisbane. Absolutely. You know, at the moment, we've got to really look after our clients, unfortunately. They've, they've, we've got a lot of people. I'm always, I'm always putting our members first and I forget about myself. Hey, look, that's only fair. That's what we do, but we need to do as well. All right. I've got one question. question. Should, I, should I buy an investment for the first time, purchase and continue renting or look at buying my own place first investment properties? I live in Brisbane. Belinda, you can answer this question. <laughs> Always buy an investment property first. Because the challenge is... Yeah, because the challenge is when you buy a property that you're going to live in, that's going to be the hardest thing that you'll pay off. Whereas at the end of the day, you've got to make sure that, um, you know, when you buy a property as an investment, that's going to be leveraged towards a property that you're going to have later on down the track. Yeah, and the thing is, this is the deal. If you if you go to my YouTube, check out my thing on Channel 9 about rent vesting, and I go yes. through it all. But rent vesting is the way to go, definitely. You know, because I, because, and Robert Kiyosaki, he, he's the same, he thinks the same as me. Your house is not your investment. You know, you shouldn't be buying a, we are rent investors. Yep, there you go. Me too. There we go. We've got lots of rent investors. I was rent a rent investor for a long time. I was a rent investor for a long time. And then people say to George, why did you buy this, you know, $3 million house, whatever? Well, I've got the money. I can afford to do that now because my properties, you know, your liability, it is. But if you've got the Correct. money, once, once you, the deal is once you create financial freedom and you replace your income through property, then you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Next question coming through is a beauty. Plus the bank will see your own home's debt and may not allow you to borrow more due to servility. Absolutely. Exactly. That's right. So there you go. But I really think, you know, rent vesting is the way to go to start off with. Once you Once your properties can pay for your house, then get a house. Then you've got to go out more properties so you can create freedom. Because the first you've got to do is, um, first thing I do is get investment properties. They can pay for my own occupier, I get that. Then I get more investment properties, they can pay for my wage, then I get rid of that. So each step you're getting more freedom. 
because think about the freedom Absolutely. where you don't have to pay a mortgage, you don't have to pay rent, you don't have to pay anything, that's good. But that's you've right. got to get, you can't do it yourself. See, the old school way, and this is the old school way, my parents did it this way, a lot of people do it this way. What they do is they buy a house and save up and work their ass off and try to pay that off first. That is nuts. It's crazy. Yes. Don't do that. Right? If you, um, you can't do it yourself. No, no one successful did it themselves. Elon Musk, he doesn't fucking go out the back of a welding torch and weld his rockets, right? He's got a team there. No. Um, with Tesla, he's got a team. You need a team around you and you need them doing the heavy lifting. You need as many properties with tenants paying you money so they can do it for you. All my properties, Correct. they're working for me 24-7, right? So yeah. and I really think that passive income is a lot better. I'd rather get a thousand passive than ten thousand active, because yeah. the passive is easy. You'd have to get up, and it comes back. It's like the golden goose. It lays, just keeps Correct. coming back every week, more and more. Absolutely, it's all about it's all it's all about playing it smarter, not harder. You know, very much so. Right. So working hard and trying to pay off your mortgage or trying to get ahead, you know, you got to work hard to get your deposit and get ready for this journey. But then you've got to start investing and getting the investments to pay for everything and getting the tenants, the tax man, the bank, the property, everyone else doing the heavy lifting and you doing the smart thinking and just getting the properties. That's what yeah, a lot of Absolutely. Doing. Exactly. So, you, so you, you're going to have the big picture, the, the goal in mind. Exactly. You really got to change your mindset, change the way you think, right? You think who, not how. Right? That's right. So if you want to be a good investor, buy yourself a pair of oven mitts. Put them on, take them to your hands, and only do what you can do wearing those oven mitts, which is not much. That's how you oh. invest. Because that's how look. I invest. That's how I run my business. Yep. Right? I, don't, and look. I, don't, right? I, I do videos. I do this. And I tell people what to do. But I don't go around typing and doing everything else like that. I, I yeah, put that's right. on. That's it, because my investing is the same way, right? Exactly. I don't want to do that. I, you don't have to do the heavy lifting. You get out, people do it for you. I mean, even with our membership, George, you know, we've got our circle of safety. I mean, yeah. they do you, – you need 10 trusted experts to run a property. Well, exactly. A property. And now we've got a client success manager, Kim, who's just joined our team, which is awesome. Yeah. Hello, Kim. Congratulations, Kim. Welcome to our team. And um, now she's going to be really helping our clients and doing the heavy lifting for them and helping them get through what they need to. It's going to be very exciting. So which, for everyone that's a really, member. Yeah. yeah, yeah for I was going to say, member, which room? <laughs> for everyone that's a member, <laughs> a member um, I want to introduce Kim to you, which would be great. And we should introduce her to, to, our, um, to the membership. Yeah, absolutely. The inner circle. Absolutely. What I was going to say, George, we were kind of talking at the same time. I was going to say probably the biggest uh, challenge with most of our members is they're all time poor. Yes. And that's why so, we're hiring more people to help them, which is great. Excellent. So, Love look, it. Guys, it's been wonderful. I feel very grateful. It's been awesome. You've got any more questions? We're at, right at the end of our life. Get in that's there. Right. If it comes out, it comes Otherwise, out. Otherwise, um, wait till next so week. So let's recap. Let's recap. Let's recap. Go, go, recap. Let's do it. Recap. So um, the Olympics. Is it worth is it? it? Be, is it, is it worth it? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, oldest lady in the world. Lift oldest lady. Pretty amazing. I love what she did. We, look, we looked at what the other Olympics did, why the Olympics worked that way. We talked about mindset. And what else did we talk about? We just, um, obviously, yeah. Robert Kiyosaki. You guys Kiyosaki. getting together for our amazing event. Exactly. That's going to be pretty pretty exciting stuff. So mm -hmm. stay tuned, folks, for that one. And then obviously we answered some great questions. Thanks, guys, for some awesome questions tonight. Because the more you give, to, you know, ask, the more we can get as much information to you guys. Because you know, education is the key. That's what's going to help you make the right decisions moving exactly. forward. Exactly. That's right. And look, if you want some education. This is the deal. What should they do, you reckon? Maybe the 14 day challenge. 14 day masterclass challenge. Absolutely. So, if you want to do that, type in hashtag 14 day challenge and our team will reach out. It's a really good challenge where I go through a lesson every day for 14 days 
I do some lessons beforehand and do a graduation webinar with Belinda live answering yeah, your questions. Absolutely. It's exciting. And only the people putting their challenge come to that webinar because we teach the advanced stuff. Because the challenge yeah. is we can't teach that here in the group because everyone's at different levels. So by getting people at the hashtag 14DC, right, then yeah. what we can do is actually once you get on the same level, we can teach you the advanced stuff. And who wants to learn the advanced stuff? I mean, that's what you're here for, isn't it? That's what we want to do, right? Yeah. Lunch. Next I'll level. Next Peter. level. Um, I don't know. Is it, are they talking about Robert Kiyosaki or are they talking about? I think they're talking about Robert Kiyosaki. I think we might not be able to push it with Robert, but we could always ask. But <laughs> uh, Look, I think um, I'm happy with a, with a lunch. I mean, he, lunch he'll have fine. dinner. No, he'll be having dinner. We'll be having lunch. Yep, absolutely. Yep. So 14 Love learning. That's great. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. We'll talk to you next week. Same bat time. Excellent same bat channel. Freedom fighters, kick ass. Bye-bye. Excellent.